Good evening and welcome to the fourth episode of Adventures in Haskell. Today we're going to take the output of our BF parser, this uh, BF instruction set, and we're going to build an interpreter to run that and hopefully generate our output, which for our uh, example program will be Hello World. Uh, in order to do this we're going to use a state monad, which is from control.monad.state which is part of the MTL package. I'll put a link in the description. And to represent the state of, um, of the BF machine, which is a head pointer and a tape, let's also import um, a qualified version of int map, which we can use for representing the tape. And uh, according to uh, the Wikipedia page, all of the cells are essentially characters. So let's import data.word and we're going to use word8 from that, which is an 8-bit value, which we can use to represent that. So let's put ourselves together a data type for representing our uh, state. And uh, that's going to be, let's call it a, a BF runner. And we'll allow a loose type on the left-hand side so in fact, no, we don't even need a loose type on the left hand side because nothing we're going to be doing is going to do anything but affect the state. And we're going to do a state T. Now the reason that we want state T is because we're going to transform the IO state so that we can do that input and output that uh, is part of BF. And the state that we're going to manage is going to be a, um, an int representing our head pointer and an int map which will be an m dot int map of word 8 which is representing our tape and we're going to transform the io monad and we don't need any return because well we're not going to actually be doing anything uh, defined but not used that's good right um, now we can basically go ahead now and start to define our instructions, but one thing that strikes me is that the way that we've written this, we're going to have to populate that int map with every single possible value. And I think a cheaper way of dealing with this is going to be to use the fact that when you look something up in a map, you get a maybe result to have a little function that will take that maybe result and give us a zero if there was nothing in the tape at that point. So let's write a zero eyes function that takes a maybe word 8 and gives us a word 8. And zero eyes will simply be maybe 0 it. So we have that. Um, and basically we have, let's what is it, six instructions and a loop. And uh, we should be able to run. So let's write our interpreter. So let's have, we'll make all of our interpreter functions be called uh, run followed by the instruction name that we're dealing with. So we're going to have run go back, run go forward, run increment, run decrement, run input, run output, and run loop. And they're all going to be a BF instruction goes to BF runner. Nice and simple. Let's just uh, bring that down and start writing them. So run go back. We use do syntax because we can. Uh, we need to get the current state. So that's head and um, Actually, no, we don't even need to do that. We can just use modify something which takes head and map and m returns head plus, sorry, minus one, because we're going backwards, comma, map. Nice and easy. Run go forward. Ought to be able to do the same in the other direction. Run increment, on the other hand, is going to be modifying the map as well. So let's do this a little bit more, a um, 
longhand. Uh, so the BF head and the BF map come from get. Get is simply the way that uh, the state monad gives us back our state. Um, modify was the way that we, we could modify the state in place. Uh, to increment a value in the map, we need to get the value out. So value is going to come from, sorry, no, let val equal zero eyes of bf map, sorry, m dot lookup bf head in bf map. And finally, we're going to put bf head and then m dot insert bf head zero eyes of val plus one into bf map not in scope bf map uh, need a capital m there we go so there's increment let's do the same oops for decrement only we'll use a minus one input well I'm going to need the head and the map I'm going to need to get a character now I'm going to need to put head M insert head C map and we're going to start to uh, run into some issues in a little bit but I'm going to leave them be for now and I'm going to do run output which is going to be let val equal zero eyes oh, I don't, don't need the zero eyes there I'm going a little bit mad we've already zero eyes val so let's simplify our lives a little so we're going to zero eyes m dot lookup of head and map which gets us our character and we should just be able to put char val and we're going to run loop um, I've got all of that wrong haven't I um, don't worry I'll go back in a moment and fix it up to run a loop we're going to have to think about this a little bit more carefully because when you run a loop on entry so just before you run the contents of that loop we want to check what's going on so let's be a little bit tidier and just fix up all of this stuff here rather than having all these different function names let's have run instruction and run instruction of bf go back and that's so it's just go back isn't it of go back let me just very quickly fix up all of these this is looking more plausible isn't it okay and when we run instruction of loop um, instructions then obviously we actually have the instructions that we want to run uh, let me just put an undefined in there for a moment and very quickly put run instructions which will be a list of of bf instruction goes to a bf runner and run instructions of instance will be map m not caring about the result of run instruction uh, could not match expected type bf runner with actual type uh, blah goes to blah probable cause map m is applied to too few arguments it is applied to too few arguments there we go right run instruction of a loop on entry to the loop we have to check whether or not the value pointed to by head is zero 
So let's test that first. Zero means that we don't run. Anything else means that we do. But how do we run? Well, the first thing that we do is we run all the instructions in the loop. So let's do that first, run instructions, instance. But that's not enough because the other thing that we want to do is at the end of the loop, we've got to test and run again. So and I'm just going to insert a loop at there. And f now when we run a loop, we run the instructions and then we tail call into run instruction loop, which is basically going to come back up here and get the new head out and look it up. And if it's zero, we stop, otherwise we run again. But because it's a tail call, that should be nice and efficient. So we've got an underline here, but rather than look at that, I'm just going to modify main so that rather than printing the instruction stream, it runs the instruction stream. And the way that we do that is that we need to run the state. Let's have a quick check of which one of the state operations we want. Um, it's going to be eval state t, which evaluates the state computation with the given initial state and returns the final value, which is going to be um, an empty because that's what we stated when we defined BF runner, and it's going to discard the state. So that's what we want to do, and we're going to do an eval state t of run instructions of our instructions, and we need to give it an initial state. Well, the initial head pointer is zero, and we start off with nothing in our state. So we're pretty much there. We've see, we can see one underline there, so there's definitely going to be a problem. So let's just get run GHC to show us what that problem is, because it's going to be a big thing that we want to look at. So couldn't match expected type state t int blah 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 iot0 with actual type io char in statement of do block c comes from get char. Now get char is an io char. We're using the state transformer to include io. So what's going on here is that we need to pull the IO of getchar up through the state so that the monad, the monad remains correct. And rather conveniently, a function called lift IO is defined for us in our monad state, I think, or at least somewhere in the transformers, which gives us the ability to do exactly that. And that would do even if the IO was buried two, three, four, a million states transformers down in the monad state in the monad stack. So if we pop a lift IO in there, we're getting further and obviously we need to lift IO of that put char as well. Now we're getting more underlines, but we're getting closer. Strange though that sounds. Couldn't match type word eight with char. So the problem here is that the character that we've read in is a char and we want a word eight. Now word eight is a number, char is an enum. So can we from enum of that char? Well, if we run with that, then we get could not match word eight with int. And the problem is that from enum returns an int. And an int while it's integral isn't a word eight. Again, fortunately, there is a from integral that will solve that for us. Now val at this point here in run instruction for output is a word eight and we need a char. So what we can do is a two enum of that value. Still not quite right because it's not an int. So we can from integral of that value. So from integral here is doing a word eight to int conversion where here it was doing an int to word eight conversion, really, really handy function. 2enum puts it back in that char so that put char 
can write it to IO and lift IO makes it so that that IO happens all the way through the state monad. Now if we run it, we get our hello world. So there's a simple interpreter that can run our BF bytecode, not bytecode, but instruction stream, and it does it with the uh, IO operating as you'd expect in a screen full of code. Really cool stuff, the state transformer, really cool stuff playing around with maybe and in the zero eyes function, one screen of code, imperative language interpreter. So next time we're going to look at applying what we've learnt playing around with BF to our calculator so that we can change our calculator over to producing a parse tree of the expressions that we write and then running that parse tree to get the answer and then maybe we'll extend it even further with some variables or some functions. Join me next time for that. Don't forget to subscribe, comment, follow me on Twitter, all the usual things. Bye bye.